Hello everybody, it's Matt and welcome back to another one of my animating mathematically videos and this time I'm interested in um, how the leopard got its spots. Here's a um, article on Plus Magazine which is a really good resource um, for getting kids interested in mathematics and um, they're talking about the reaction diffusion system which is um, a pair of differential equations that Alan Turing um, kind of pr proposed uh, 50 years ago it says here um, could be behind the formation of patterns in the development of um, animals for example the um, pattern on a giraffe or uh, spots on a leopard or stripes on a tiger, stuff like that. Um, and anyway, so I want to kind of toy with uh, visualizing this in Mathematica and kind of sh trying then to explain in the blog post uh, how it works. And just as a brief introduction now, the, the, you have a, um, an activator and an inhibitor, which are two chemicals uh, present on the skin of a developing embryo, I guess. And the activator c causes um, the skin to go dark colour and the inhibitor um, uh, inhibits that I expression. And the activator will um, cause more of the activator to be present as well as the inhibitor, but the activator doesn't diffuse as quickly as the inhibitor. And so uh, the, um, well, uh, hopefully we'll see why that causes uh, patterns to, to make like stripes. And um, here's the a Wikipedia article all in the system. Now we'll be looking at two component reaction diffusion equations in uh, one dimension. And here's what effects you can get in two dimensions. So I thought we would could try and replicate this setup in one dimension. So instead of getting spots, we'll get uh, stripes because we'll be cutting through a bunch of spots and we'll see some stripes. So here is the here are the equations, and we'll go into Mathematica and start trying to code those up. I just tried to copy and paste this uh, this image into the notebook. Yeah, cool, it works. So we can use that as a reference. Uh, if we make the window bigger and boost up the magnification for the viewers at home. Okay, so ndSolve is a function which uh, allows us to solve a uh, differential equation. Finds a numerical solution for ordinary differential equations. Now, um, we have two functions uh, u, which is a function of x and t, and v, which is also a function of x and t. Now, the top equation is the derivative of u with respect to t is equal to uh, du squared, which I'll just call du2 because I noticed that they just give a value of du squared in the Wikipedia article, so we just, we won't like call it du and then square it, we'll just call it du t, times this, which is del squared, is what I'd call that. So in uh, one dimension, right, uh, it's just the second derivative, I think. So du x t uh, with respect to x twice is how you do that. Right, okay, and then plus u of xt minus u cubed. Oops, uh, so that's command si control 6 gives you the exponent there. It should be cubed minus v uh, minus kappa escape k escape. So that's the top equation done and the bottom equation is very similar. We have dv2 plus u minus v, and none of this other stuff here. 
So this just quickly, um, this first part is just a diffusion equation. So the amount that's spreading out in time is dependent on the second derivative, spatial derivative. Um, I'll maybe show that that just gives diffusion um, uh, as a first step. We'll need to set up uh, initial conditions as well for it to be able to solve it. So we need to define u of x at 0. So if we um, say that is, let's try uh, sine pi x, just as a first thing, and do the same for v. And um, also need, we'll need two more, um, we'll need boundary, what's called boundary conditions. And um, I think we'll set what's called um, zero flux boundary conditions. So that is, the, we have use derivative 1, 0 of u uh, at well, minus 1 t. Okay, so this is um, du by dx at x, e x equals minus 1 equals 0. And um, the same at x equals plus 1. So their boundary is, is x equals plus minus 1. And the same for v. And that, that should be enough um, information to do numeric um, uh, dif uh, numeric solution of the the differential equations. Apart from we haven't given values to du to kappa. Oh, and I forgot to put in tau here. Right now, ND solve. We need to give it. Uh, yeah, see x, x min, and t. We can actually use those exact things, I guess. So, well, x is going between minus 1 and 1, and t is 0 up to t max. Now, let's give some values to these. t max equals, um, and solution equals that. That's my phone. t max equals 10. Wait, what's this one at? Yeah, this is at t equals 10, so we'll do it a bit further beyond because that's not converged, it says. t max equals 20. Now, their values for stuff is tau equals 0 0.1. Uh, d2 equals 00028. And dv2 equals 0 0.005. Kappa equals uh, minus 0 0.005. See so what happens when you run that. Minus 1 cannot be used as a function. What are you talking about? Um, NS. Let's just check this. I'm not 100% sure about if I. Did. Yeah, that's correct. Um, um, D. What is minus one here? This is minus one. Let's see what happens if we get rid of all those. Okay, don't get rid of that. So it's. Oh, uh, ah, we need to put in UV here. Boundary conditions should have derivatives of lower order. Um. Let's see. Um, they, what's wrong with those boundary conditions? DV, uh, I, f I forgot to change this. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So boundary and initial conditions are inconsistent. That's because the derivative of sine pi x at x equals minus 1 is not 0. So what? Um, we'll need to think of something that does have um, the right, uh, well, that does have the correct 
uh, derivatives at the side. So let's try some stuff. So cos, cos pi x looks like this. So the derivatives here are 0. But if we add 1 and divide by t, which is probably the same as yeah, cos squared of pi by 2 over x or something similar to that, we can use this as a window function to ensure that the derivatives are 0 at the sides. Um, so let's do that. Window of x is uh, this. And instead we write window of x, window of x, encountered non-numerical value for a derivative at t equals 0. Oh, it's, I didn't. Boundary and initial conditions are still inconsistent. Um, so let's d window of x by x at x equals minus 1. 0. And a window of 0 is should be 0. A window of minus 1 should be 0 too. Right, so why are the derivatives why is the initial condition different? Window of minus 1 0 Hmm. Boundary and initial conditions are inconsistent. X t v of x at t equals zero. It's just that's, okay. That changed it. Okay. Hmm. Maybe it's a bug. So now we have this solution, and we should try and um, plot it, see what it looks like. So if we do u x t and substitute in the solution, we get that, okay? And now this is the way I would do it. So, um, so we see we have a function of x t. We want to replace x with some value and t with some value. Now let's plot over x, x between minus 1 and 1, and manipulate over t. Uh, so here we go, t, t between 0 and t max, and this is the kind of, uh, this is the big moment where we see if it worked. Okay, so this is the window function, and then this is how it spreads out. Okay, it looks very promising. It's like it might be starting to form some peaks and troughs, right? So let's change the plot range uh, on the um, plot, not the manipulate. So it goes here, minus 1 and 1. So we're getting this. Okay, I think we need to make increase t max up to, say, 80. Ignore that warning, because what's a precision error thing. Okay, cool. That made that went up quite into a interesting pattern, and it's what we want. Patterns it seems to be working. Bigger plot range, so we can see them. Okay, snaps into place. Uh, let's also plot the v. So that u is the I should have said the activator, uh, which diffuses quicker than v, which is the inhibitor. So now we have, they both start off the same and then, yeah, that's perfect, that's what we want. So um, at areas where the activator is bigger, then it will make a stronger uh, color on, this, on the skin. So th this might be a snake or something, and th this is the kind of one-dimensional because it's along the length of the snake. What color do we get? And we managed to get some um, stripes, so the plot style of this one make it red. So the red one is the activator. It will in general be more spiky because it's diffusing sl more slowly 
and it will ha be surrounded by moats of inhibitor. That's quoting the plus math uh, website. Right, oh, so we have that. And I just, sh I said I'd show that those are just um, diffusion. Uh, the first part will just give you diffusion. So if I comment out all this part, which is the interaction with the with itself and the inhibitor, then this is just a diffusion equation. Now also, let's make it have some spikes. So I'll put in some Gaussian bumps, x minus 0 0.3 all squared times something, and another one somewhere else, so that's at x equals 0.3, and x plus 0 0.3. Six. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I see there's a bump at point six and a bump at point three, but it's not they're not particularly bumpy bumps, so let's do this and this. Okay, a bit bumpier. Now they should just spread out since they're diffusing. Yeah, okay, so they're slowly, slowly flattening. Let's uh, make them even more bumpy bumps, so it's more clear. Okay, here. So they'll slowly spread out. And du2 is how much they're spreading out. It's multiplying here. du2, if we increase this up to um, by an order of magnitude, the bumps will spread more quickly. Yeah spreading out into a flat line, so it's all diffused. But the, that's the diffusion part of the system, and the reactor part is the rest of the equation. So we'll get this. Oh, that's, I forgot to change the diffusion rate again. OK, it looks better. Let's see. Yeah, see, so it springs into stripes. Very nice. Um, well, actually, it's not so clear that these are stripes yet, so let's first pick a good plot range. Minus 1 to 1 is about right. Uh, yeah, let's get a bit higher up than that to get in that spike on the left. Okay, cool. If we go nice and slowly, it looks quite cool. We want to show the stripes developing as a picture. So if we get rid of these, x is equals none, and we also want to, we want to show like uh, stripes as a picture, as I said. Now these are these look like they might be banded stripes because there's sort of two peaks uh, on either side. So banded stripes. Um, we want to look at u of x t minus v of x t u of x t minus v of x t. Uh, yeah, that will work. Um, just take what's in that list. We'll be replacing x with something and t with something. Um, let's just grab, let's just get the numbers as a list x between minus 1 and 1 and get 100 of them, 101 of them. So that would work for a particular value of tt. Yeah, 101. Um, let's, so if we manipulate this between for tt between 0 and t max, and we want to, let's try array plot. So plot what the numbers are. Doesn't it work? Is that because it needs to be two-dimensional? Yeah, OK. So there, we can see the stripes. But um, the aspect ratio should be different. Nice, that's quite cool. So we could put that as a background onto this image here. 
I like how the last stripe comes into place. So we, it might be good to make a t increase exponentially for the animation at the end because it's doing a lot of stuff at the beginning but then at the end it's just very slowly changing but still changes as you can see here but anyway um, let's take this thing and try and combine it with this what happens if we just put it here right that's not good if we um because I want to make it as a background is there a way to something like let's look at the options for plot I think that we might be able to use epilogue I've never used that before so yeah maybe not uh, sure, let's try graphics inset this and do the same plot range as we wanted uh, minus one point minus one to one and minus one point one to one point t. Um, did I forget to put in a comma? Very almost. The inset has to have the correct other parameters. Position, op, pose, and size. Um, so, if you do, con what's the command? Co command shift B, control shift B, will go from one bracket to the end. So, with the inset, we need to define the position. Whoops. Okay, so the position should be it should be centered at zero zero. Um, zero zero. Let's see what this does. Okay. Um. If, well, then let's do this. So it has to let's position at minus one, minus one, minus one point one. Uh, zero zero. So let's put it in the bottom bottom left corner, and the size then should be two. Yeah. Okay. And size should be two. Aspect ratio should be bigger. It's not lining up properly. Um. Maybe inset's not the best way to do it, after all. What happens if we just do... This is getting rid of a lot of work, but... I tried something like that before, didn't I? Right. So, the array plot... Okay, is uh, over a strange domain. The coordinates don't match up. Oh, I see. Um, that could be solved if I. Yeah. If uh, if I sorry, <laughs> if I rescale the axes. So um, if we do plot range x is between 0 and 100 and 1 then x should go to x minus 50 all over uh, f um, all over 50 yeah that's right and do the same for the other one minus 50 all over f 50 x is between minus is between zero and one and one. Okay, good. But then we still have to rescale for the y's. The y. 
I think it must be going between 0 and 1 on the coordinates of the array plot. So what should be done is to, um, to do 1 plus this over 2. 1 plus this over 2. Let's try that. 1. Uh, um, where did I put this? 1 plus that over 2. No. Because um, at the moment it's kind of going between minus 1 and plus 1. So if I... Oh. If I add 1 to that, that will make it go between 0 and 2, and then if I divide by 2 and then, it should be in the center. Okay. That looks good for the red line. Now for the other line, uh, 1 plus that all over 2. Okay, so they're in the center, and they're being drawn, the stripes are being drawn. Okay, it looks quite cool. Now I'll just make uh, the plot range be minus 1 and 1, minus 1, 1, because I don't want it to... Yeah, okay, that's correct. Oh no, it's pushing, it's still pushing the plot at the bottom, see? For some reason. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll just try and tweak that uh, later, it's not so important. Um, one thing to do now that would be good is to fix up how it looks. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's make these thicker, thicker lines so you can see them a bit better. And also um, let's uh, make the stripes more colourful, perhaps a bit more like an animal skin type texture. So that would be a uh, option of array plot, colour function. So rainbow is their example, but I don't think that will look too good. Right, so this is what rainbow looks like. Whoa, crazy, crazy style. Let's uh, have a look at our options for built-in colour functions. If you search colour scheme, then you'll get to this page, and we can try. Um, we can try something else. Let's try uh, these are earthy colors. Okay, looks quite cool. Nice. It builds up um, a stripy pattern. Not a lot of contrast between the. At uh, each end of the spectrum on that one. Deep sea colors. Um, how do they look? Deep sea colors. More, more contrast. Looks quite cool. Um, a bit hard to see the blue of blue stripe against that, so we could change it to um, a different color. Like. Uh, uh, what would it look okay? Maybe yellow. Right, I think that looks pretty good. So there we sh we show um, the development of this system and how it converges to a band of stripes. Now, just while we're mucking around, let's try a different initial condition. Let's add in another bump and shift the bumps a little bit. Uh, minus 0 0.9. Uh, let's make this one more sp spiky. Move it a bit. And do that. So, okay, let's make the this one a bit spikier. And let's 
add. Okay. Different conditions. It should still end up into a similar stripey pattern. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. It's a bit of a shame that you can't really see the effect that these double bumps is giving so clearly. That could possibly be fixed by squaring this. So uh, squaring it would just make small emphasize smaller differences. Might improve contrast. Okay, it's not. Uh, do I mean squaring? Uh, yeah. It's not so good. I guess there's a very big term on the left hand side that's dominating. So, uh, what happens if we do. Let's just try some random functions instead of squaring, see how they look, basically. Uh, Tanch. That looks kind of nice. Tanch squared. Um, okay. Tanch uh, zero point two of x all squared. No bad ten. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. Something between uh, two. Okay, I like something like this a bit better. But anyway, uh, here we have sort of demonstrated the experimenting in Mathematica and we're kind of able to get a good feel for how these differential equations are interacting with each other. We can try um, experiment with different parameters and such. What I have here is enough to put together a little GIF and I'll put a small explanation of what's going on and uh, hopefully people find it interesting. Okay, thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.